What is going on guys? I'm back for another Cobra Friday and today we're checking out Cobra Kai season three episode four. If you've been watching my other reactions you know I've been really enjoying this season so far and I've also been re-watching the first two seasons so I'm just really in a Cobra Kai mood lately. And the last episode ended with a lot of things to look forward to in this one. Johnny decided to stay at the hospital with Miguel and his family instead of going to see Robbie in prison so that's probably going to create some tension between them. Cobra Kai stole all the money from the car wash fundraiser and beat up that one kid. So now Sam has decided to reopen me Agido and have them start training again without her dad knowing. And Daniel has gone to Tokyo, Japan. It seems that his strategy is to go straight to the source and try to create a new contract for his dealership. All of that means that this is likely to be a very crazy episode, so let's not waste any more time. Let's just get right into it. Banzai! Did they say Banzai? At our core, we are a family run business, which is why we have sold more cars oh. in the past 10 years than Guess any it didn't other go well. in the San Fernando Valley. Unfortunately, we have already made our decision. It's not just about sales. We are trying to avoid negative PR. Thank you for coming all this way. I, I like that detail. It's clear that, you know, they're not happy about it. You know, they do feel sorry for him. They just, you know, you have sometimes you just have to be realistic from a business perspective. What the hell am I going to do? I wonder if he's going to go and visit Okinawa instead of going straight home. I'm afraid he's no longer with us. Very American way of thinking. In Japan, you can always visit someone. They speak to us, even when they are gone. Hmm. The nature. The tradition. Spend your four seasons in Okinawa. Ah! Ah! I wish I could take credit for that, but you know, people have been predicting that he would go to Okinawa this season, so. That's the only way to guarantee a victory. He makes me so nervous because you never know what crazy thing he's gonna do next. I want you to kick this tree off the top. <sighs> a bonsai tree. That was closer. I can do it, Sensei. Well, what are you waiting for? Can he do it though? Don't you want a running start? Don't need one. Hmm. Is that what he wanted him to do? Not bad. Not bad at all. But he cheated. No, he didn't. Unlike you, he did exactly what I asked him to do. That's the best way to beat your enemy. Not just with brute strength, but you have to fight smart. Hmm. Do that, and you will always come out on top. Hmm. Again, I like when they throw in these details. Normally you think that Cobra Kai is all about anger and brute strength, but, you know, he was a soldier, so soldiers gotta think smart. Oh yeah. It's one of the things I've always liked about Miguel is that he's Team Cobra Kai, but he's not exactly the same as some of the worst people in Cobra Kai, so I'm wondering how his opinion will change over time. I can take you in there if you like. I'm sure he'd love to see you. No, he needs to be with his family. He's at this awkward halfway point. He's choosing to be with Miguel instead of Robbie, but he's not fully trying to be with Miguel out of uh, thinking that's what he needs to do. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Tommy Village. Oh, is that the village from uh, Karate Kid 2? I really do need to go back and rewatch the Karate Kid movies and watch the ones that I haven't seen. I've seen the first two. I don't think I've seen the third and fourth ones, which most people say they're not as good, but I still want to have seen them. And again, this may be the lesson that Daniel needs, because one of Daniel's problems has always been, you know, being stuck in the past, even if his intentions are good. So maybe this is kind of a wake-up call, but I don't know. Is that a black guy? 
Are you fighting in there after everything that's happened? No. You're seriously going to lecture me about starting fights? I'm just trying to say. What? Did you say your corner? That you got my back? Say you're sorry. Just an idea, what if by the end of the season, uh, Robbie, you know, becomes closer to Johnny and Miguel somehow becomes closer to Daniel? That'd be interesting. So what's under the sheet? I'm glad you asked. Behold, what scientists believe to be the valley. <laughs> Go ahead, press the hadrosaur egg. <laughs> that is really impressive. I never would have thought at the beginning of the show that uh, Dimitri would be the one getting girls by being a dork, but... Like, I totally expected uh, her, the because she was kind of the bully in the first season, to be making fun of him, but... It took me three weeks to build. Eh, it took my ball three seconds to destroy. <sighs> Did she enter your personal bubble without your verbal consent? Yeah, she definitely triggered me in my safe space. What are you talking about? He started by destroying my science project. That was an accident. I mean, you probably shouldn't bring your toys to school anyway. I don't want to teach you. I just want you all to respect each other. She's right, guys. We should stop the aggression. That's a thing, because before he was a bully, that's how he actually was. So he probably knows how to manipulate teachers. Legos off the ground. Someone could get hurt. I hate her so much. Oh, I, I don't remember the second Karate Kid as well as the first one because it's been a longer time since I watched it. Wow. I just love the amount of respect that this show has for the original movies. Daniel Stone? Hmm. No, it's fine. I shouldn't be surprised that you chose Miguel over me again. I didn't choose Miguel over you. Damn, I'm just trying to make things right. Well, I'm sure Miguel appreciates that. Hey, I'm not the one who put him in the hospital. <sighs> Robbie, come on. Don't touch me, Anthony! I don't need you anymore. Council Blatt will give us detention just for breathing near them. I don't see her anywhere, do you? Sorry. What's a game of soccer without a little physical contact? They think we're doormats. It's proven wrong. <sighs> Sam, I understand your intentions are good, but you're falling into the trap. You're just gonna create more conflict and go down to their level. Oh, it's kind of like that scene in the original Karate Kid where uh, Daniel was flirting with that girl and then uh, Johnny, like, uh, I think maybe uh, kicked a soccer ball at him or something and he got mad and then Daniel was the one who got in trouble. Man, you had a good thing going with the hottest girl in school. And you ruined it. By becoming a loser. Okay, I know I don't like Miyagi-Do resorting to being like Cobra Kai, but I, I gotta admit, I take some satisfaction in this. Remember what Sensei said. Fight smart. See, this is really interesting. They're always flipping the script because you think Cobra Kai will always, you know, just do the obvious thing, let their anger get the best of them, but they're being smart unlike Miyagi-Do, so this is why I love this show. <laughs> You know, I am the same age now that Mr. Miyagi was when he met me. Really? I wish you could be here to help guide me. I think I can make that happen. Oh, the thing the bartender was talking about? Oh, speaking of bars. Corky. Cut in water. By now, I figured you're over your little temper tantrum and we can talk like adults. No, do not listen to him ever again. Let me get a chicken sandwich to go. Sure thing. You need three minutes. You got three minutes. <laughs> wow. Now it's time for you to come home. 
No, Johnny, don't. Please. And when our boy comes back, well, we'll help him get up on his feet. Go anywhere near Miguel huh. or his family, and I'll kill you. There you go, Charlie. And I don't think he's joking. Mr. Miyagi wrote love letters. You're surprised, yes? Oh, you're kidding. Oh. What is it? Oh, this was, um, this was written a week Mr. Miyagi died. In life, I have always looked for signs to show me the right way, but I got lost. Until I met Dano once. <laughs> His kind heart, strong with cheek, and loyalty and love for those around him is a guiding light to me. I'm very proud of the man he has become, even though he still has a heart ahead. <laughs> Samantha makes me feel like I'm her tanme. Oh, the tanme? Grandfather. In life, we always lose our way. But it is people, not the signs, that guide us back to the right path. Do you like that, Nikie? I heard that in a car commercial. Yes. Go get it. I can't walk. Uh, I might never be able to. Go never. Can't. Those are just words that are meaningless. It's time for you to get out of that bed and do something. Because I'll always be your teacher. Now go get it. Yes, Sensei. You got a visitor. Who is it? No. No, don't. Don't be who I think it is, please. No. No. Oh, no. No. Oh. Insult of my honor again. And I kill you. Chosen. Wow. I cannot handle this right now. Okay, guys, so that was Cobra Kai Season 3, Episode 4. Wow, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can handle this show anymore. So there were three main parts to this episode, so let's talk about each of them one at a time. First part was Johnny trying to reconnect with Robbie, but ultimately it just doesn't work out. That's what's always been admirable about Johnny, but it's also one of his worst qualities when it comes to his relationship with Robbie. It's because he is trying to be there for Miguel and doing what Miguel needs, but that kind of comes at the expense of his relationship with Robbie. Which you kind of understand the situation. I mean, Robbie was the one who put Miguel in the hospital and Robbie never really wanted anything to do with Johnny. But this episode really did suck because Johnny really was putting forth the effort and he came so close. But then at the end, probably thanks to advice from John Kreese that he shouldn't have listened to, he once again goes back to Miguel and really, really tries uh, with him. Granted, it's not like it was a totally bad lesson. His talk with Kreese inspired him to go to Miguel to face him and to help him take his problems head on. At the same time, he's also using the same teaching style that he has been using in the previous two seasons which he was trying to get away from so I'm worried that Kreese's influence is going to be getting under him again and nothing could put that better than when John Kreese visits Robbie at the prison that is 
I'm so worried about how that's going to end. Because that was a smart strategy because Johnny said stay away from Miguel, do not go near him or his family, but he never said anything about Robbie. Because Robbie really doesn't have anyone right now. He's pushed Daniel away, he doesn't want anything to do with Johnny either, so now it's kind of, uh, Kreese is going to be the guy who's like, I understand your pain, I understand your feelings, and I'm going to help you. I wonder if this could be setting up a three-way dynamic between the different sides of the show. We have Daniel at the head of Miyagi Do and Sam will probably be his primary pupil. We have Johnny at the head of whatever he's called now and Miguel is his pupil now that they're kind of reconnecting. And then you have Cobra Kai under the leadership of Kreese and it seems that Robbie may be his pupil, which I really do not want to see that happen, but man would it make for some good drama. Speaking of Daniel, we saw him uh, with things going wrong in Tokyo and then him going to Okinawa. I thought that was an interesting way to start the episode, just showing that things immediately went wrong for him. He still is very lost. But I had been wondering if he was going to go to Okinawa while he was uh, in that region of the world and a lot of fans had been speculating that before season 3 came out so it was cool to see him go to Okinawa to confront his past and try to find himself and reconnect with that character from Karate Kid 2 which I really need to go back and rewatch the Karate Kid movies both the ones that I have seen to refresh my memory and the ones that I haven't seen because they're referenced throughout the show as well I think I might actually do that later today but anyway getting back to the episode I thought everything in Okinawa was uh, absolutely great I loved seeing him you know just to reconnect with an old friend. I loved how they incorporated the flashbacks from Karate Kid 2. And that scene where they're reading Mr. Miyagi's last letter before he died and just absolutely everything in that. You know me if you've watched my reactions is that I just don't really cry that much. Uh, I get emotional at times, but I rarely get on the verge uh, of actual tears. But uh, you could see that I was really tearing up inside and I honestly thought that I might cry because that scene was just so beautifully done. And I love the message of it. It's something I can relate to. It's something a lot of people can relate to is uh, feeling that you've lost your way, but people will be there to help you find it again. So all of that was fantastic and I'm sure that it's going to carry through the rest of the season. But before we can even think about that, the guy who was the antagonist of Karate Kid 2, he comes back out of nowhere, which I'm Really interested to see how that's going to play out. I would not be surprised if a fight breaks out at the beginning of the next episode. Finally, we come to the third part of the episode, which is the continuing conflict between Sam and Miyagi-Do and Hawk and Cobra Kai. Right from the start with them at the dojo and Hawk kicking the plant over, I thought that was really interesting, the approach they took. Because Cobra Kai are all about striking first and using your anger and being aggressive and all that stuff. But Kreese points out at the beginning of the episode that that's not enough. You gotta fight smart. And I thought that was interesting how they do that in comparison to Miyagi-Do because that's just the trap that Sam falls into is that she's right to be angry at Cobra Kai and needing to do something and I understand her and the other's frustration but unfortunately they're just falling into the trap of stooping to their level and creating more conflict because Hawk adjusts his strategy to be smarter he's more careful about when he attacks them he, he acts all defensive and kind of like a wimp when the counselor comes around because you think about it that is actually how he used to be before he joined Cobra Kai so it's probably something that he's used to and man that counselor I'm sorry I hate her so so much she is so frustrating and I know that you're supposed to feel that way so that you can be angry at the end when Miyagi-Do are the ones who get punished but yeah every time she is on screen and does something or says something it's very likely to make me mad but then again it's not like Sam is totally blame free as I've said she lets her anger get the best of her Dimitri too they stoop to Cobra Kai's level but still this conflict between them is really really interesting and I am very excited to see where it goes from here so yeah this was another really crazy episode it was a combination of some some characters progressing, some characters regressing, and sometimes a little bit of both. The season is doing a great job of having me very engaged with what's going on right now and still setting up things that are just getting more and more interesting as it goes on. And I saw that the next episode is called Miyagi-Do, so it's probably going to be focusing more on Sam and her friends, so I'll definitely look forward to that. And with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. What did you think of this episode? Whatever it is, feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments and let me know what you think. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more content. Also, be sure to check out my other videos over there. It really does mean a lot. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next Cobra Friday.